Okay, so this is where we, this would be the uh, user interface uh, of NCCFX. So you have uh, four tools here, Turbo, Grid, CFX Pre, Solver and CFX Post. So the first thing here we can do is we just go to our uh, working folder. Let's say my working folder is uh, where all my files are available. I just make it my working folder. Let's say CFX, I just make it my uh, working folder. I just copy this and go here and type here copy the paste here so that becomes my uh, working folder so all the files would be saved in that working folder then what i need is i go to the first to go with cfx pre just click on that cfx pre and then the cfx pre uh, is going to start it is uh, taking time for loading that workplace for cfx pre so you can see that cfx pre is coming to the picture uh, so this is now you need to create an empty file let's say i just create a general simulation and uh, just say okay at this place so this is an, actually an interface where uh, all the physics to be implemented so uh, right now uh, what i can see i can have the mesh here i go to the mesh first and right click and importing mesh because i have created mesh in icm cfd so i just choose uh, icm cfd is where my mesh is okay uh, as you see my mesh would be uh, at ICM fluid channel dot CFX5 and my units are centimeters let's say 25 centimeter length and 1.5 centimeter radius this channel I have taken I just make it an open so the channel I have created you can see here on this fluid channel just click on that so you have all that uh, geometry created uh, you have uh, here in is that thing out was that thing and you have uh, top that is there top surface was there bottom surface was there so what names you have given icm cfd these names are available on this uh, cfx pre as well so you can see the side one side two is there as well as uh, so the whole geometry what you uh, and mash you created that is available in uh, uh, ncc and the CFX pre and the whole simulations let's say the mesh part we have done now we have flow analysis okay so the first step always in doing that you need to specify the domain because software doesn't know what it is it is just uh, 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 do, uh, grid points the domain is divided into small parts so what I need is I need to create a domain so instead of default domain I just create my own domain let's say I just give name let's say fluid channel is uh, one domain let's say fluid fluid I just make it let's say fluid would be enough fluid uh, fluid water let's say I just make it my domain any name I can give so that name is my uh, the location is uh, I need to select that I fluid is selected as a location and here my, I need to do the some basic settings for example the material here is material library is there so I'm just choosing water otherwise you, if you click on that there are different choices for selecting different materials now so I'm just using the water as a continuous fluid uh, my reference pressure is I'm just taking it in atmospheric uh, and my fluid models is uh, whether I am doing heat transfer or not so there is no heat transfer model uh, I am laminar or turbulent let's say I am dealing with uh, laminar flow and no combustion no thermal radiation nothing uh, just uh, re, uh, automatic uh, initialization so this would be my uh, uh, basic domain setting so uh, uh, I just apply on that so I will be able to see okay my domain is fluid water is my domain okay now I need to give some boundary conditions so here it is a boundary let's say inlet is my boundary condition and once I select inlet so inlet is my boundary condition and the geometry here is in is where my uh, uh, inlet is taking place and 
I need to specify boundary conditions. Let's say I'm dealing with subsonic flow. I need to know about uh, mass flow rate, static pressure. Let's say I specify normal speed. Okay, at this point, you need to do some calculation so that uh, one can uh, find out what value of uh, 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 speed, normal speed at which the fluid is inlet. Let's say I just make it uh, 200 is my Reynolds number. Let's say I just take it 200 is my Reynolds number and density of the fluid, speed of the fluid and here the diameter is uh, 1.5 is the radius. So diameter would be 3 millimeter. So my diameter of the channel let's say 0 0.03 is the diameter of the channel and the viscosity I need to know. Okay, These parameters you can find out from this material tab as well. If you go to the water and you want to see the material properties. So I know the density of the water is 997 you know, and uh, it's uh, for example I need to know the density which is 997 here uh, and uh, uh, the reference state I have taken 25 degree centigrade let's say uh, then I go to the transport properties and I can see that my transport properties at 0.6 is uh, thermal conductivity and uh, this one is uh, my viscosity which is 0 0.000899 my viscosity which is my dynamic viscosity. So its value is given as my dynamic viscosity in this units. So its value is I can read here is 0 0.1230 and then 8899 so 0 0.008899 is my viscosity okay the speed is something less my unknown in the Reynolds number formula and the dimensions uh, I have it let's say uh, uh, 3 centimeter because it's a 1.5 centimeter so the diameter would be 3 centimeter I have only taken uh, half part of the channel so I just take it 0 0.03 substituted everything to get the only unknown in the formula of Reynolds number that is velocity. So I work out uh, multiplying 200 by uh, 0 0.0008899 when viscosity and divided by 997 density and divided by 0 0.03 meter which is actually uh, 3 centimeter. So 0 0.03 would be so my velocity comes out to be, once again I calculate 200 multiplied by 0.0008899 divided by 997 divided by 0 0.03. So it comes out to be 0 0.00123. Two point zero zero five nine meters per second. So it's a very small speed of water at which the water is flowing. So if I increase, I could increase the Reynolds number as well. But just take it, uh, let's say 0 0.006 meters per second. I take my speed, which is uh, the very slow speed because it's a laminar flow. So I go back to my uh, boundary condition, which is my uh, first inlet is to be uh, once again go to the inlet boundary condition and at inlet I just choose in is by the location and at the boundary detail I just put 0 0.006 meters per second that is my speed at the inlet so I can see that at inlet uh, uh, you can see here this arrow has come and uh, you can enlarge this part as well so you can see the speed has normal velocity is defined at that point. So this is subsonic velocity because water is flowing and so it is uh, uh, okay so this becomes my uh, inlet boundary condition okay then I can give an outlet boundary condition outlet is uh, this let's say I just on outlet uh, what I do is I select my location outlet and I just select uh, static pressure and uh, with reference to atmospheric let's say I select zero atmospheric so it means that once the gauge pressure is atmospheric then it would be some atmospheric condition at the outlet so I can see that uh, here uh, the outlet boundary condition is where fluid is going out is uh, static pressure 
so uh, the fluid is coming in and leaving from that place so the boundary condition at the outlet is defined so in and outlet is defined okay now i need to give the other boundary conditions uh, let's say the wall boundary condition so I'll go to that wall wall is actually the top wall basically which is uh, preventing so i need to select a wall okay i'm not able to see the wall here ah oh, that's so funny it was uh, the top okay top is actually my wall okay i select the top and the boundary detail is you have free slip condition specified shear or some velocity at the wall but i have no slip condition i have taken it i can give some velocity to the wall if this upper layer is in motion i need to specify the coordinates but this is not the case here so i just apply and it becomes my uh, no slip boundary condition at the wall still my uh, fluid domain is having that default so uh, i have selected in out and wall okay the, the the next thing is because all uh, this channel is uh, the side walls are actually the symmetry boundary condition so it is in the z dimension infinitely long long length so i just say the symmetry uh, symmetry side side symmetry symmetry side i just take it i have a boundary condition of symmetry here and i select need to select my side 1 and side 2 both together so this would be my symmetry so you can see this channel is uh, infinite length in the z direction so that it becomes my symmetry boundary condition okay then the last thing left here is my what we call refluid water is actually uh, that thing that is the this part because this uh, half of the channel is actually simulated so that is as actually one another symmetry why i call it an axis symmetry so i just call it an axis symmetry i just give a name that say axis symmetry and this is uh, symmetry and here i just put at the bottom bottom becomes my symmetry so this wall is also my symmetry because uh, uh, the wall upside and the down is actually symmetric so i'm just uh, uh, analyzing so this is how i can, you can see the fluid water domain everything is been initialized so the physics has been applied i have taken an analysis which is a steady state analysis so i just go on selecting the steady state analysis and i have a domain fluid water in which fluid is coming in and leaving the pressure boundary condition at the outlet uh, velocity at the inlet no slip boundary condition at the top wall and the rest of the walls are symmetric i have said so all these symmetries to be uh, done okay this is how i can save my cfx pre project uh, let's say just i got it a fluid channel this is my project um yes so uh, i just make it a fluid channel save it as a project so um one few more things you have to do it here at this point in your cfx pre you have set all the physics there uh, after first importing a mesh then you uh, choose a domain and then you apply the boundary condition you choose that material and okay solver settings i just go to the solver settings okay here you have different schemes like upwind high resolution or uh, at this point it is not that so meaningful but uh, my conservation targets are 10 to the power minus 5 i just, just select it uh, my resi uh, residuals for convergence criteria is uh, 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 Uh, i have the speed of the fluid is 0.06 meter and i know it is uh, the speed is equals to distance upon time so my distance uh, for the whole length is uh, i know that it is uh, 25 uh, cm so it would be 0.25 meter and my speed is 0.06 so i know the time scale so what i can do is 0.25 meter divided by 0.06 so that would be the 4 second 4 second is actually the time scale so i can uh, at this auto time scale i can do a physical time scale that actually helps me in let's say i just let 4 second 4 second is my physical time scale depending upon how much is the speed how much is the length so that actually helps in solving this converging quickly once i have a, a realistic physical time scale so this is uh, and you know equation classes is 
it is observing continuity equation it is observing momentum equation once i say continuity then i can set convergence criteria for individual equations and you have some uh, advanced setting but you don't need to get because right now we are interested in continuity and momentum and momentum is also so three equations so this is something i go on to this default Okay, so solver control setting. Okay, one more thing I miss in the solver control setting is conservation target. I just say conservation target 2.01. So I just apply that. So once uh, this uh, target is meet, then my solver should stop. So all the solver controller setting to be uh, the solver controller settings to be done in this CFX pre. Uh, okay, the, what I can do next is uh, defining the run. Let's say I define my run and uh, this is the definition file is generated, df file is generated which is my definition file and now I am in a, a position to start my solver. So right now I am doing a serial run not a parallel run and on uh, um, uh, I just say start run. So once I say start run then the problem starts uh, going towards solve solution. So now from CFX pre I move to a CFX solver has already started and my solution is starts converging and since I given a very physical time scale so 10 to the power minus 5 residuals level I have reached and if you see uh, red one is your mass continuity equation and uh, uh, u v and w are the three momentum equations and if you see this uh, result file your program is uh, uh, made is like that you have chosen material as a water your density is 997 a specific gravity is there dynamic viscosity is there all these parameters are uh, set in the program i have chosen 0 0.006 my meters per second as my speed and static pressure which is the zero atmospheric to reference so it means when a, when your reference pressure is one atmospheric you choose zero atmosphere it means uh, atmospheric condition is considered at the outlet so this is actually the outlet boundary condition and wall is uh, i have slip no slip at the wall so uh, buoyancy is uh, ignored and all things are uh, ignored and the solution target says I have given a physical time scale of 4 seconds so that is actually available in that definition file and uh, once uh, it solves actually the first thing before solving is uh, uh, this whole domain is water what it does is it sets some memory for uh, uh, integer real character and uh, double so it uh, the software always do first the uh, memory allocation for uh, your uh, problem and your domain is uh, having uh, 44,242 nodes actually and number of faces your domain information is there uh, this information is there even the Reynolds number is there but don't go into the Reynolds number here it is something 104 they are showing but uh, this is false because it doesn't know what channel is what volume is it based on just calculating the volume and take the cube root to get the characteristic length so we are actually not doing that because in this case uh, this diameter is taken as a characteristic length and your system is momentum equation and mass and momentum is being solved okay so then it starts solving in iterations and uh, even in this uh, few iterations like 17 iterations we reach our residual levels of 10 to the power minus 5 and here you have to see this uh, what is actually at the inlet and outlet so all these boundaries are uh, imbalances are uh, uh, 10 to the power minus 10, 10 to the power minus 11, minus 14. So these imbalances should be less than 0 0.001 level which I have set because once it is not true then it means conservation targets have not been met. So this is where you have to see your result file. Okay, so all these uh, uh, solutions have been generated and the result file this fluid channel dot 01 result has been generated and we can see the result let's say we go to this click here launching the cfx uh, shut down the solver and launch the post processor so once we open the post processor we can see the results uh, uh, what our solver has done and we can see how actually this works so uh, here we got into the cfx post so actually there are three steps First is building a geometry and then meshing which you have done in IC and CFD. Now you have three uh, CFX pre, CFX solver and CFX post. In CFX pre you put all the physics 
NCFX solver you actually simply solve when that is a block box and the result is just a result file. And now we have CFX post is open. Now you can see different results. For example, what I do, I insert a location. Let's say I insert a plane and my plane is uh, XY plane. I just give a name plane one. And what I do is my XY plane in the value of Z in terms of centimeter is 0 0.05 centimeter in Z. So what I do is just in the middle, if you look at very closely, just in the middle, I have created a plane in my geometry because it is 0.1, so 0 0.05 would be in the middle. Uh, I want different colors, not constant. I want variable to be plotted. Let's say I want pressure to be plotted on that plane. So I just click on clicking pressure. So, okay. So you can see uh, the red one is some high pressure and the blue one is low pressure. So higher pressure here, lower pressure here that forces the fluid to move. So this is the pressure distribution I can see on this plane. Uh, throughout the length of the channel, I can see the pressure distribution. Okay, I can see the velocity distribution, let's say magnitude of the velocity. So once pressure is high here, uh, pressure is low here. So this difference of pressure forces the fluid to move. So once the pressure is high here, then the velocity should be low. So I just click on, so I can see uh, that there is a velocity distribution. So higher velocity at that place. And uh, one can see the magnitude of that velocity. Uh, uh, so higher velocity where the pressure is low. And initially we can see uh, the distribution of the velocity, but here just show the magnitude of the velocity. Keep in mind, not point, our magnitude is 0 .00, uh, um, maximum value is 0 0.008. So 0 0.06 is actually the uh, inlet speed. I can calculate, there is a calculator here, if I want to calculate, let's say I want to calculate, uh, there is a function calculator, go to the function calculator, uh, my function is uh, I want, uh, let's say, uh, area average velocity and my location is, let's say, inlet and what I want is, let's say, velocity, so I can calculate. So 0 0.0059, that's approximately 0 0.006 meter per second is the area average velocity. Or I just want uh, average velocity, not area average, it still have given me this 0 0.0056, the velocity. So this is a function calculator which can give what the velocity was at inlet. So this is at inlet velocity. And uh, you can see the distribution of the velocity is no slip boundary condition. Uh, so velocity is zero at the wall and uh, maximum at the center and that is much more visible once we make it a, a vector plot. So what I do is I insert a location called, uh, not a location by I insert a vector plot, just clicking on that uh, vector plot, vector 1 let's say. Uh, my location is the plane 1 I have made and I want let's say the velocity. So here in this model tree, I don't want a plane, I just want velocity vector. So now you can see the velocity is uniform at the inlet and uh, um, yeah, panning tool, you can move forward in this, in this direction and you can see that this uh, laminar velocity profile at the center. So this velocity profile you have got it and uh, uh, that shows and you can change the length of the symbols let's say just a smaller the length so you smaller the length so arrow length would be smaller and uh, you can have the value of the velocity that has been plotted here so where is the maximum velocity maximum velocity is there's a center and the lowest at that and this would be this parabolic velocity profile that is visible here okay uh, let's say if you want to see the friction factor uh, this is what we can do it uh, what i do for this i want to see the friction factor on the top wall uh, what is the wall shear stress at the wall so i just go to this uh, i just create a uh, insert a location that name is actually called polyline so this polyline I created and how I created it from the intersection method, boundary intersection. So I want my uh, uh, top wall actually uh, to be intersected because my, uh, okay, this top actually, this top is selected. 
and then this plane 1 because uh, which is actually in the center so that is plane 1 is another boundary so now it created a line at the intersection of that to apply it so can i see the line which is at the top wall and uh, not axis symmetry but at the plane wall okay so now you can see this red color uh, this green color there is a one line is created in the middle uh, where this top wall and the plane is intersecting this top wall and plane is intersecting what i want i want let's say something to be plotted on that right now i haven't done any variable i can do any variables let's say i can plot wall shear stress at that so it can give you the distribution of that wall shear stress uh, which uh, okay is not that so visible but what i can do is i can go to the chart creating a chart and on that x axis i can create uh, a location my location is a polyline and my on the on the x axis my data is let's say uh, x values and uh, on the y axis uh, my data is let's say uh, wall shear stress so i could have uh, uh, velocity and uh, i could have uh, on the y axis okay just i make it i just go there and select wall shear stress so i just apply it and this is how you can see in the beginning when the flow is developing there is a higher wall shear stress and after certain length let's say around 0.1 meter length uh, which is actually it is 0.25 uh, meter or 25 centimeter is the total length so then the wall shear stress becomes constant so it means that the flow becomes fully developed so this is you can see how along the length x your wall shear stress is varying and the location we have used here is a polyline and because uh, where uh, that is actually we created for intersection so that we can see uh, uh, what that uh, wall shear stress is so so many things we can do in this solver for example if you want uh, uh, area average or whatever it is i mean there are so many functions there length average mass flow let's say i want it uh, mass flow rate and i want the mass flow rate at an outlet let's say so i just say uh, it gives me kilograms per second at outlet it is negative and once i say at inlet then it will be able to calculate the positive so this would be the rho times area times velocity so that would be my mass flow rate so anything i can calculate on this uh, 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 and it generates several reports as well if you go to the 3d viewer and if you go to the report viewer so what actually i have created uh, my file report my mesh my physics report my boundary conditions uh, the chart I made that is actually part of it. It generates report by itself. So whatever you are doing it, uh, that would come into the report. If you want anything to be added in the report, you can add it. So uh, uh, different calculations you can perform, uh, chart viewer, different comments you can give. So if you go onto the 3D viewer, you can uh, see that. So you are interested in pressure distribution as well as uh, velocity distribution. So this is something uh, you have worked out. So this is actually called as uh, uh, post-processing. A lot of things can be done. I just have to introduce you um, uh, how uh, the, uh, the fluid flow takes place in that channel and how would be its wall shear stress and uh, uh, the different variables are available. I mean, if you see on the variables, uh, if you want a velocity gradient, let's say, uh, velocity gradient u gradient x it means dava u by dava x how your velocity is varying in the direction of x that's if you want that thing you can see how actually it is varying so even the velocity component u is changing in how your velocity gradients are there so all these things your pressure distribution your mass flow rate and everything is being calculated here through solver so this is how the uh, CFD works. You can draw streamlines. You can do so many things. Uh, right now I have just shown you a plane on which 
I just show you the distribution and if you go to the outline uh, one can see that uh, uh, here uh, let's say instead of a chart if you want to uh, uh, let's say polyline or uh, you want a plane and in on that plane I have just plotted the pressure distribution so I can see what pressure distribution is um, what is the let's say the velocity distribution uh, I go to the plane and just select whatever I want I want it let's say instead of a color I want some uh, pressure so I just want it a pressure uh, one more thing it is actually it gives you some hybrid and conservative conservative values are little different than hybrid hybrid means actually it takes care of what value you have given in your boundary condition that takes into account but conservative is within the um, uh, conservation uh, takes place within this control volume or the calculator so there is some slight difference in the because this is the boundary data whether hybrid or conservative so that is something you can uh, plot and here you have local or global coordinate system uh, I'm not going into the detail for all that and you can uh, view through different uh, reflections and mirroring let's say I want this distribution to the whole channel so I just make it uh, 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 reflection of an XY plane I just apply it uh, to that uh, when your Z is uh, uh, zero so you want to uh, okay so you can you can uh, yeah this is for plane actually yeah this is for plane so x y plane reflection of an x y plane uh, uh, you want from plane actually yeah and uh, the plane I need to select actually already the plane is already there okay, a lot of things can be done which uh, uh, I mean in the beginning I cannot give everything in this one lecture so you need to go into the processing but you have seen this way by which actually CFD is working um, geometry building meshing uh, applying the physics uh, solver settings solution then post processing so these are the steps which are to be followed in cfd so this is where i stopped today's lecture